<laughs> so this makes me really happy. A rabbit would have to pack its lunch to go across the field. Why? Have to get to your honeymoon suite. Get a room. You big stud. What's going on in that head of yours? <laughs> Okay, let's go, Terry. Let's go, Terry. Oh, oh, we forgot our dates. Our dates from our big date. Bye. Good morning. It is Saturday. It is raining. I am going to take today and go visit my sister. So I'm going home. Oh, it's a big wool festival in Paris, which is where I grew up. So I'm like, well, that's the universe talking because Monday I'm supposed to get all my wool projects that I've been making. Not I've been making, that Mariposa has been making. This is the universe telling me I need to leave the farm for a few hours and go visit my sister, go see some wool projects and get inspired and see some really cool people and creators. Just a nice day away, guys, and I don't even feel bad about it. I cannot handle sitting by the window and watching it rain one more day. <laughs> Llamas are a little miserable. Yeah. Wait, it's long. I think they're gonna have some there today in the, in the livestock building. So why'd they move it to Paris? Uh, I don't know. Maybe Woodstock didn't want to rent them. Mm -hmm. Oh, bulls. Oh. Uh, I don't know about this. For context, everyone, our family does not wait well. <laughs> no, we're all very patient. Very patient. Like, like they have guys parking cars. Shout out to our volunteers. Oh, Brooke, you're not allowed in. No pets. Oh, oh no! <laughs> a green bin and if you're claustrophobic I don't recommend Ugh. good morning you guys oh, I should uh, always be careful what I volunteer to do we haven't been crazy happy with the way that auger cross auger has been sounding like when we're running the wet corn over to the dryer. It's been just really clanking, almost sounding like it's not fully full. So Mark was wondering if we got some of those wheat sprouts that were uh, caught at the top. He wondered if they uh, had come down. So we weren't sure if there was like something just binding that little hole. He couldn't fit and he was going to climb down in with a rope. And I said, see, let's see if my shoulders are a little more narrow, but I should have wore safety goggles because I have so much dirt in my eyes. Today is wool day. Mariposa, the wool company that I took you guys through the tour, I don't know, a month, two months ago maybe. They finished up all my projects maybe a week and a half ago and it showed up half an hour ago and I've just been in awe of my skid. I'm so happy to have been able to work with uh, Mariposa. They did such a good job. They did everything. They packaged it, they labeled it, they boxed it and put it on a skid for me because I couldn't get there. Like they were just, they went above and beyond and I am just so thankful to be able to work with such cool people. Here's a little unboxing. I'll put down my camera. Typically with my merch or anything that I do, I like to base it off of things either I've asked you guys what you want. It's not really why I started the channel, but emails and messages are always flooding in on favorite, anim favorite characters you have. So of course the merch that I just designed, um, we, have a, we have a hoodie that has goat on it. The other one is uh, a picture of all, some of all of my favorites. So it's Ruthie, Goat, Ruby, Rosie, 
poppy. I called the sweater squad goals. Of course my squad is my sheep. Uh, I did a little onesie to celebrate Belinda's little baby. That's here any minute, literally, of any day now. That merch is actually coming out this Thursday, October 21st. This video should come out Wednesday if I get it done. Um, so that will give you guys time to get on the website and be able to order it. As of the wool stuff, I'll give you lots of warning as to when I'll launch that. So here we go, here's the unboxing. So this is the Billy collection. So it's a black skein and a natural white. So it's not, I didn't dye the white. Uh, so this is my wool. Uh, we did dye the black because Billy wasn't sheared in that group. We did have a few black ones sheared in it, but I think it was his mom. I don't think it was him. So uh, this is just dyed to look like him, his colors. I did a Ruthie collection. So we did the Ruthie Brown and the Ruthie Natural. So that's my Ruthie collection. Most of the wool yarn, we left it natural, So, but we did a chunky one. So this is, I think you can use these for blankets and scarves and stuff. I don't, I'm still learning this stuff, you guys, so bear with me. Uh, it's a number five bulky and it's really soft. I didn't think my wool was gonna be soft, um, but this is nice. The Ruthie and the Billy is a number four medium, and the bulky is a five. And then this is a number three light, two-ply DK. This means nothing to me, but I think it means more to like real people that know what, the, what this use, gets used for. We also did some roving, natural roving bumps. It literally has my, a little bit of my straw in it still. And it smells nice. Every roving I've got still smells like sheep. So they did a good job washing it. Everybody keeps asking me for these, so you'll be very happy. We did some dryer balls. I think we have one with the face and two plain. And you throw three in your dryer, I believe, and then they work together really good. We did uh, design your own dryer balls. So you get the kit, and it comes with colors so you can just make you want to make a flower if you want to make a bumblebee or whatever and then you get three little balls of your own I put this stuff on Instagram and asked you guys if I was to do anything with my wool what would you want these are all viewer requests all these things last but not least that I'm gonna show you because the rest is for Christmas is a goat felting kit so that's goat so this makes me really happy I miss her so much I'm really excited about this. It's like actually kind of emotional. There's water everywhere. We're taking <clears throat> mental notes of how much rain these fields still are trying to drain, but there's puddles everywhere. And all the wheat that's been planted, not just ours, looks not good, would you say? Looks like a rabbit would have to pack its lunch to go across the field. Why? Do you guys remember when we planted the canola and we threw in some double crop beans, soybeans behind? Well, we were we like harvested the canola. What did I say? Plant? Yeah, you said plant. Oh, I meant no. harvest. They're still probably a couple weeks away from being able to even call by. I can't combine. believe that though. I can't believe we have beans. That is pretty much typical wheat field for our area. Just not happy. I've spent a bunch of time this morning on my computer up in the office um, trying to organize my next breeding groups and I think what I might do because I've run these guys through a few times uh, I don't actually have their ear tags all as one group yet and I really want to sort them all together and get all their information and their data so I can uh, accurately put them with what sire I want them bred to. Now these guys are gonna be bred naturally this week. I might even do it tomorrow. I was gonna do it Thursday, but I'm not sure what the weather's gonna do. Uh, and I wanna just get this job kinda done and out of the way. Chris is not here to today, so I think I'm gonna run them through, just scan their tag today, run them through, get some data on them, and then spend the rest of the afternoon doing that all on my Gallagher just uh, I have enough information on them now it's making grouping them a lot easier every time I do this uh, the actual art of moving them in with the rams takes a bit of time just the more groups you have the more kind of awkward it is logistically speaking <laughs>
All you're gonna see me do is scan, so it's not too, too exciting. I really just need data. So this whole system, I rely on 100%. Um, and I'll kind of show you when I'm done what I collected today and then how I make my judgment calls upstairs, if that makes sense. Sometimes we can't, the, the, the gun just will not scan a tag. And this is a young U, so it's not even that it's old, just sometimes they lose their read. So what I have to do is scrape the uh, oils off it so I can read the number and it's really small. So 501-880-367. So then on this, I have to do find tag, five, zero, eight, eight, zero, three, I think. Yes. And then I press enter. And that's just a different way to get her information. But she is in here, but for whatever reason, the gun just doesn't want to scan it today. I spent the last half hour or so just going over my um, breeding groups, making a map of those pens and w how many groups that I potentially could have. Because I could have a little fun with this group because it's naturally, they're being bred naturally. So I don't have to get so caught up in the uh, U ram ratio. I have a ton of rams. My problem is uh, pen logistics pen spacing because I have to make sure every pen has access to a water bowl so I think I've been able to do it whatever sire I want each group bred to I can put under here and I can bulk add a whole bunch so that's kind of why I wanted to do these groups again so I kind of have these in order so I've got a bunch of dorsets there and then I've got the Rito group so you're looking at this column right here the new Rito so that's Billy and uh, so there's three Billies and five other new Ritos that I bought last year and then I've got my steel Rams and I'm gonna just play around with these Tunis boys so I've got about a group of 17 U's I'm gonna put on the two Tunises and uh, the one Suffolk Lucky I'll put I'll throw him in that pen I'm, I'm assuming or hoping that I'll be able to tell the difference in the lambs based on kind of coloring and stature, which one is the Tunis and which one is the, the Suffolk. All right, what I went ahead and did too, just so I can visualize and I can show Carissa what we're doing, here's uh, just a schematic of the North pens. This is the pen closest, the handling system's like right here. So that is what we will aim for come tomorrow. Say hi to the vlog. Hi. <laughs> tell the people what you've been up to. Napping at the moment. On a Monday afternoon. Yeah, a real college kid move. <laughs> what time do you go to bed? Um, two. <laughs> <laughs> Say bye to the vlog. Bye. Good morning. It's cold. 
well, cold in my universe. We are going to take the list that I did yesterday, which is in my pocket, and it's gonna be a bit awkward and a bit painful, but this is kind of my goal. And I went over with Carissa a little bit. She's laughing at me. Uh, I will change my mind probably 100 times before now and then of how we're gonna attempt to do this, but we're gonna be doing a lot of double, double handling, so I'll take some footage here and there. Many sheep farmers use uh, marking harnesses in breeding groups. I do a version of that, only I paint the ewes uh, back ends with a certain color of paint. And then I'm, what I'm hoping is that when the ram mounts her, he will kind of rub that off. And uh, I kind of know what breed is, is breeding each ewe, so I don't get too caught up in which actual individual sire is mating that ewe, if that makes sense. They came in really well, probably because I got them in here yesterday. We're gonna scan each tag, and then I'm gonna tell Carissa, we're, all we want first are anyone, any of the ewes that we want bred to the mature Rito rams. So we're, I'm gonna give her a specific paint color, and those are the only ones we're gonna mark first. And then they're gonna go back, all the other ones are going back into their pen. This is where the double handling happens. This is when, if you're setting up a handling system, if you can have multiple drop zones, I strongly recommend that. I have a couple I can use, but on a big group like this, when I wanna split out five groups, it's a huge limitation. to get to your honeymoon suite. Keep going. Get a room. Got going on down here, honey? Yeah. Here go. That's the most action I've ever seen him. Hi. <gasps> Billy! A boy! You big stud. Billy is in love. In love. Well, we're going to be entertained for a few weeks here, uh, much to YouTube's dismay. I think I found a setting that I'll, I might be able to try, and then I can finally talk about breeding in a little more detail without 
getting uh, red flagged. This is the most wonderful time of the year for me, is breeding season. Especially right now in October, this is their natural in season. They'll be breeding probably pretty quick and I don't have to spend a lot of money to convince them to do what they're designed to do. We took our time this morning and we got the five groups done. It worked really well the way we did it. Unfortunately, a couple of the groups didn't get painted. It doesn't really matter. The paint is more just for my visual to make sure the rams have some on their chest and that uh, the females, I can tell if they've been mounted. Uh, but they all get scanned anyway. Oh my gosh, there's so much breeding going on. We have five groups. This group here are my steel rams. So uh, the st steel is not an actual breed. It's a composite breed that the, the, the owners that I bought these sheep from, their last name was Steel. So that's why I've nicknamed this breed Steel. The breed is uh, based on a Dorset Rito base. Um, and then they've brought in a few uh, New Zealand traits, I believe. Marge is in this group. What are you saying, Marge? Right there. I was talking to my nutritionist last week uh, when we were in the fields here, I think it was Thursday, last Thursday they came, they swung by to take a look at the flock and they asked if I had any questions. I said, the one question I have is why are my rams losing their wool about this time every year? This is an ongoing just uh, issue that I seem to have and it usually starts mid to late fall and that goes right into, right into the following season, like right into winter. It's not that they're losing it, I, they're eating each other's wool, which to me means like they're lacking something or they're bored. I'm hoping the breeding will somewhat uh, distract them for the next month and maybe we will see a little bit less wool eating. So yeah, there's a lot of breeding going on. These are naturally bred. So these guys were gonna be, these guys will all be together for the next 34 days. Uh, so I'd like a two 17 day cycles. Should I keep them in a little bit longer than that? I could keep them in for like 37 days, but I'm like, I hate it when I've been lambing for like over a month, you're tired. You kind of just want it to be done. So we'll sacrifice a few off the tail end. Most ewes in season, if they are cycling properly, which most of them should be, uh, they should come into heat that first cycle. So those first 17 days. Billy's mom. Hello. Are you gonna have a tunis baby? <laughs> Hello, sweetheart. I see you still have a kinky head. Can we call you kinky? on in that head of yours. <laughs> Hello again. <laughs> 